This is Gears of War 3. We're here on Xbox Series S taking a look at the game that is now FPS boosted. And yeah, it's actually kind of really fascinating for this one. So what we're getting here is 1440p at 60 FPS. The FPS boost is automatically applied. We've got auto HDR support and it runs at the same resolution quality as the Series X. So both of them run at 1440p, 60 FPS, when the FPS boost is applied. For the Series X, you have to turn it on because it drops the resolution. And it's just really quite surprising why this is the case. I'm honestly not too sure. Maybe there was some kind of issue with the Series X side of things to give us that 4K 60 or something like that. But I am genuinely surprised. As you can see, the Series S is definitely punching uh, above its weight here, which is spectacular. So let's dive in here. We're going to be showing off some of the multiplayer after. First off, as you can see, we're doing the campaign. So hopefully you enjoy this look at uh, kind of experiences as we'll be going over what this has to offer. So this is the third entry in the Gears of War original trilogy follows Marcus and Delta as they deal with what's left of, well, basically, <laughs> the planet. Trying to save the day, it has to do with, basically, Marcus and his father. But once again, you've got your cool crew, you know, Dom's there, you've got a uh, whole train, he runs on whole grain, get some more context into his backstory, you've got Baird, you know, and you're also joined by others, like Anya's fighting now, and... There's all these different like side characters they can introduce, there's like Jace, and, you know, all kinds of stuff, and there's some pretty cool DLC too, where you actually get to experience, you know, like uh, Ram Shadow, where you get to actually play as like Rom and its crew, and it's kind of like a cool flashback type thing, and yeah, definitely an expansive campaign that you can enjoy in many great ways. And this looks fantastic. It feels really good at the 60 FPS. I, I quite like that. I mean, you know, this is definitely the way Gears of War is, is meant to be played, which is nice. Uh, there's also, aside from just playing, you know, the campaign, there are difficulty options, but there's also this arcade mode where you can do more silly things like, you know, be like a comet and stuff like that. They definitely offer a lot of different fun ways for you to play and interact with, uh, well, Gears of War 3, which is quite cool. So yeah, you can actually play a low four-player co-op as well, if you'd like to. Uh, it definitely is something that is meant to be played, you know, together. I think it does offer a lot of unique experiences for you to have, and I think it's generally just quite a lot of fun. It's, it's a great game. It really was a fantastic, I guess you would say, conclusion to that original trilogy before, you know, Gears 4 continued things after a huge time gap. But this one is a lot of fun, and it's very well loved. No, you can't, Marcus. You can't save them all. So it also finishes off the big battles, you know. You got uh, our group of people left kind of fighting together. No longer part of the COG, because that's basically disbanded. And you're working to battle against not only the Locust, that are pushing hard, but also the Lambent that are growing almost zombie-like creatures that you have to deal with, and that's the limited edition case. I have that. <laughs> Kinda cool. And yeah, like I was saying, the limited edition case is like right there. Pretty cool, right? And uh, yeah, Gears of War 3. Always a great title to jump into. And I mean, this looks obviously the exact same as what I experienced on okay. the Series X, but you know, we're kind of showing it off here. Now, there might be, I guess, maybe some performance things here or there during, like, cutscenes, but, you know, from what I've played, it generally seems to be running, you know, very smooth and offering the full-scale Gears of War experience, which is kind of what we're after and, I guess, generally sort of hoping for. So aside from the multiplayer, which is competitive and something we'll show off later, there is also going to be a horde mode where you get to defend against waves of enemies and... You know, varying enemies and stuff like that, and we're, we're mostly just going to focus on, I, I think, the, you know, the multiplayer and uh, obviously the single player here. Uh, the stocks are growing. Always causing some issues. What can I say? 
and everything is basically improved with this one. You know, I believe most of the cinematics, if not all of them, are actually like in like engine and game, so they all kind of benefit from that visual upgrade. Nearly got it that time. That candy's like ten years old, man. You're gonna puke your guts up. Yeah, well, that's a price I'm willing to pay. Guys, see, I see now. It's crazy you wouldn't just like throw that thing overboard if it's like. <laughs> Taking up like room and stuff. Maybe it's too heavy to get rid of. This is Captain Michaels of all ships company. We've nice. now entered lambent water. I know. Go to alert state one and secure for action. Let's go with school on. See, yeah, it's it's like a place. cover based shooter if you're not familiar with gears at all. I would actually suggest jumping in from the beginning because all of them are like FPS boosted or all of them are at least sixty, so you know, we've got a fluid, smooth experience, no matter how you want to enjoy the campaign. It's definitely worthwhile to play it. You know, not only alone, but if you can play it in co-op, it's much better. This better be good. Good? Probably not. A shock? Oh, Anya. Yeah. Guess who's come back from the dead. Do I get a prize if I'm right? Chairman Prescott. No shit. You mean ex-Chairman Prescott? That asshole. He ran out on us 18 months ago. What's he expecting now, red carpet? I'm waiting to find out. Warship Sovereign. Hang on. This is KR-01 requesting permission to land. One passenger, Chairman Prescott. KR-01, this is Sovereign. You are clear to land. Deck team standing by. Wonder where Prescott managed to find a helicopter. He sure as hell didn't leave with one. He never called. He never sent flowers. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear this shit. I'll get the popcorn. Damn, your stocks are gonna do some real damage one day. Yeah, they are. Real soon, I would imagine. Nash, Gotta equip the weapon because we know stuff's coming. Where did they vanish to? Well, that was pretty easy. Sovereign to KR01, you are clear to land. The forward lift is being raised for you. Stand by. Copy that, Sovereign. Now, oh, the fluidity is just fantastic in this. Betty strolls back in here like nothing happened. Better park that nice new Raven carefully. <laughs> Let's give the traditional stranded one. Strip the chopper for parts. I think he knows that the cog fell apart after he disappeared. You think he cares? Chairman Prescott, welcome to what's left of the cog. I'll have answers for you, ladies and gentlemen. But later. I need to see Colonel Hoffman immediately. Hoffman's been gone almost as long as you have, Chairman. He's dead? He left to take a group of civilians to Anvilgate. Captain Michelson's the senior officer now. Not that we have much of a military left. I'd better talk to the gallant captain, then. I have a mission for it. Oh, and Sergeant Phoenix, you'll want to see this. Gee, thanks. This better not be a shopping list. Let's go check it out. A <laughs> shopping list? Who the hell does that asshole think he is? Prescott's gonna find out an ex-chairman doesn't count for shit with Michaelson. Action stations, Lambert have boarded the ship. We just we stood down. Oh yeah, and there was like a ton of Easter eggs within this one. We like yell down the different pipes as yellow chicken monster comes flying out. It's pretty glorious. That's for sure.
so this is the multiplayer component of the experience. We're just going to be doing a bunch of different like maps and rotating lobbies and stuff just so you can see how the multiplayer handles in a bunch of different scenarios. So this game had a very healthy multiplayer element to it. A ton of maps, which I believe are all available for free at this point. I think all the map content is. So you can download those and enjoy the full scope of it. There's still people that you can find in matches. You know, it's like a weird hour of the night, but there's still you know, people you can play with. And all the different playlists. And if regular people aren't here, there is bot fill as well. So you can play with a bunch of uh, bots if you want. And as mentioned, Horde mode is present too with a bunch of different, like, I guess you could say fortifications and traps and stuff that you can use to fend off waves of enemies. And, you know, there's all kinds of different, like, boss enemies too. You get things like, there's like berserkers and rumox and everything like that. It's, it's kind of a little crazy. So the Horde uh, definitely offers quite a bit, and I think it's quite a fun experience to enjoy if you've never played it. But yeah, the multiplayer in this game is, is still great. There's lots of different prestiges for you to do, different levels, like I'm a 92, I'm, I'm almost prestiged again, just doing, you know, the odd stream of this one occasionally just to show it off, which is kind of neat. But yeah, it's, it's still frantic, it, it seems to all be running quite well with the, uh, you know, gameplay with the FPS boost supplied here. And it's just a really smooth, fluid, multiplayer combative experience, which I think is fantastic. So Series S is definitely delivering on this one. I am pleasantly surprised. I'm also kind of amazed that, you know, the Series S seems to be handling this so well. And with the Series X, we couldn't get the full bump up resolution-wise. It just seems almost a bit odd. I don't know. It's something we probably won't know for a long time. If we ever do know. Yeah. Kind of cool. But yeah, this this multiplayer is just a blast. It's so competitive. And like I said, you can, you know, depending on the time of the day, you can get like full matches of this going still. People still love playing this game. So many different characters. So many different things you can like unlock and do. A bunch of different weapons. Different playlists. Big King of the Hill fan. But you know, you can play like... Not basically any of the playlists, right? Deathmatch seems to be the most popular, which is strange because that's not like an OG, you know, kind of Gears playlist, but that does seem to be the one that people play the most. And when you're competing against with people on the, like the Series X, you know, you're, you're going toe to toe if they're using the FPS boost. If they're not using the FPS boost, you're basically matched evenly. If you're versing people still on their 360s or on the Xbox One, you have a huge advantage over them, which is fantastic. <laughs> So, yeah, it pays to be on the Series S for this one, that's for sure. So I said, what a, what a, what a great multiplayer experience. Gears of War was... Like, this, this franchise has been so good, and this one was really, really well-loved, I think. I mean, I played a, a good chunk of it. You know, I kind of maybe was into the other Gears of War games a tad more to some degree, because this one, like, the sawed off and stuff, but I definitely played just an absolute ton of this experience. I got, like, my Xbox 3 kind of gun skins. My buddy from the States had to put a jack-in-the-box to get me this or whatever. It was, it was kind of funny. But yeah, just really cool. Really, really quite cool. And a blast. So I say they've uh, knocked it out of the park with us. It's, it's super cool to have this level of fluidity, and it's super cool to be playing this game. Or having like a new reason to be playing this game so many years later. And I mean, it's just like, it's really awesome that there's still people in the community that like jump on this and, you know, keep it alive. It really was like, I want to say almost a 360 era kind of situation this game. You know, just in terms of the content, the fun events they used to do, the, the full scope of it from the campaign to the arcade within the campaign to multiplayer to Horde. It definitely was a full package, that's for sure. These bots, they can be vicious, but they're not Gears 2 bots. Oh, the Gears 2 bots are frightening. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those monsters. <laughs> it looks really good, too. I mean, like, you know, 1440p obviously isn't fully as sharp as, like, going for the 4K is. Like, you do get some, like jagged spots here or there, but that's such an easy trade-off in order to get, you know, 60 FPS here, that it's like, 
you know, it's, it's an easy choice to make. And I mean, it's, it's on by default anyway, so you have to really go out of your way to kind of turn it off, and I don't know why you would do that, but uh, I don't know, people would be crazy. <laughs> that is for sure. What are these bots doing? Man. Oh no! Is that real player still here? Yeah, he's still here. It's just like one on one right now. Them against me. But you can actually like legitimately find matches in this game, which are which is super super cool. You know, it's it's kind of cool, right? Like just the fact that we can play this game so many years later and not have any issues with servers and. You know, with the bot fill, it kind of just keeps it alive almost eternally. As long as they don't ever close things, you can just keep on playing and rolling. Oh. Hmm. We've got a rivalry because we're the only real people. <laughs> Boshin like to use a lot of different uh, weapons and whatnot. That's for sure. They pick up like everything. It's kind of hoping we'd get into different like maps, but we've just been the heck's that thrash ball guy doing? We've just been like rocking the same setup here. Let's go, team. Like a triple kill, that's what I like to see. You know, it's kind of actually really wild to have participated in like the beta. Oh, there's like a whole city back there in the backdrop of the lights and stuff, that's kind of neat. But it's like, I participated in the beta for this game so long ago. I mean, you had to have, like, bullet storm or something to get that. I think it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was bullet storm. And it's like, I played that and covered it with, like, super low resolution back in the day. And then I saw the game launch, and I played it. And then, like, generations of gaming have passed. And now I'm back playing it, and it looks and feels better than it ever did. For consoles, that is such a, a different feeling to have that we just really haven't experienced. Like you on PC, it's it's like a no, you know, no duh, it's easy to do. But for consoles, it's kind of spectacular. It, it truly is like a big, big deal. At least for me, I, I find this to be absolutely crazy. Little Series X going toe to toe with the Series X. Mind blowing. I'm actually surprised they didn't try to do like anything a little bit higher, you know, like bump it up a little bit more resolution wise. And like what, go like three times or something, but it's probably easier for them and it just worked properly. Going for the chainsaw, he's savage. But no, it's all running well. You should be able to compete very easily with others in the multiplayer. And have things look really good and decently sharp. And you should be able to have a great time with this, whether you're doing the campaign again. Playing maybe the campaign for the first time, maybe just jumping into the multiplayer. The full experience is still here. Just like maybe you remember it, or ready for you to experience better than ever before. For your first time, it, it's just it's, it's roaring and it's ready to go. I think that's quite exciting. And like I said, make sure you check out all the, you know, DLC options and stuff like that. There should be free content there that you can enjoy, which is nice. At least for the multiplayer maps.